Bendito y amoroso Dios, que tú morabas en el cielo. Sabemos que por medio de tu Santo Espíritu estás aquí con nosotros. Gracias por ello, Padre Santo. Tú has prometido que donde estén dos o tres reunidos en tu nombre, ahí estarás tú. Y así esperamos que en esta mañana te demuestres, Padre Santo, soberanamente como tú. Solamente tú puedes. En tus manos de amor estamos, Señor. Pedimos una bendición para cada uno aquí presente. En el amor de Jesús te lo suplicamos. Amén. Doc thinks he's fine. <laughs> Do any of you ride a bicycle? <laughs> oh, wow. All but the little one. That's great. There's, yeah. Do you like riding a bike? I got my first bike when I was nine years old. We lived up on a hill there in Paradise Valley, and um, it was a lemon orchard all around us. I didn't get to ride it too long because um, there was stickers and I wound up with a flat tire. We know what that's all about here, huh? Yeah, when my kids, I had to get solid rubber tire. Don't, don't. <laughs> anyway, um, there's rules to riding a bike. You know, back when I was your age and riding a bike, we didn't have to wear a helmet. But you need to wear a helmet now, huh? Yeah. Because if you fall and crack your head, you, it could be really bad. Yes? I only have a helmet for other stuff. You only have a helmet for the other stuff? Yeah, I only have helmets for four-wheelers and motorcycles. Oh, for four. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have a normal one. You don't have, oh. Yeah, you have to watch him part of it. He loves babies. These two, <laughs> I'm amazed at how these little ones, how much they learn in Sabbath school. And Wesley, he was, uh, last night we were looking at some uh, pictures, and uh, he said elephant. He pointed to an elephant. You know, so at two years old, they, they it's amazing how much they learn. And uh, anyway, there are rules in riding a bike. The one rule is called gravity. So you have to cooperate with gravity. You know what gravity is? What goes up comes down, huh? Yeah. And so there's rules. Uh, about 27 years ago, I decided that my kids were all grown. And I went to a place. and. Uh, I bought a motorcycle. This is what it looked like. Yeah, I know. You're showing me a picture. And, uh, but in buying the motorcycle, um, I took a class that the DOT offers. It's uh, Share the Road. And um, there were things that I learned that actually saved my life five times. Because shortly after I bought that bike, I took that class, and then I had a little time to practice, and um, we went up to Rio Doso. And one of the things that I learned in that class is that if you have to stop, you want to keep your eyes level and lay on all four brakes and, and stay looking up. Because if you look down, that's where you're going. You know that from riding a bike. You don't want to look down riding a bike because that's where you'll be in the gutter. And so that saved my life up there because I was headed for a cliff and I couldn't make the turn and I stopped. And I stopped about two foot from the edge. I think my angel was there. So besides obeying the rules, we want the angels to help us. Um, another time, one thing that always scared me about on riding a bike was going over a road that had that curved with sand. Have you ever done that? And uh, a lot of people, when they, that happens, they slide. And you don't ever want to have to slide. I was fortunate I never 
had, I never lost my bike, I never had an accident, never got hurt. But there were several times that if I hadn't had that class, uh, I probably would not be here today because um, things just happen. Now, God knew that, didn't he? And a long time ago, before he created the world, he gave some rules. And it's not thou shalt not rules, are they? The Ten Commandments are good rules. You know what they are? They're like a fence around us. The first rule is what? Don't have any other gods before me. He said, I don't want you to have any other gods before me. He said, I'm a jealous God. That is not a mean way. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, with every commandment, if you say, if we love Jesus, we won't have any other gods. If we love Jesus, we're not going to take his name in vain. If we love Jesus, we're going to keep the Sabbath holy. We're not going to kill, steal, lie, none of those things, because we love Jesus. Charlene Hill and I was in a community Bible study one time, and <laughs> the subject come up about God's law. And this lady said, oh, well, we can't, you know, we're not perfect. We can't keep God's law. And Charlene, she shot right back. She said, of the Ten Commandments, which one are you having a problem with? That you can't keep it. She said, are you wanting to lie? Are you wanting to steal? What's the problem with the Ten Commandments? And she challenged those ladies that day to think about it. We can't keep them on our own, can we? But who's there to help us? Who's there to help us? Not to steal. Who's there to help us? Who? Jesus is. And angels. So if you have a problem with one of the commandments, resisting sin, because that's how we know sin. What do we do? We pray. That's all we have to do. We only have to pray. And how easy is that? That's easy. Even Jeffrey, we have a little poem we say, a little talk with Jesus. And I said, you want to talk to Jesus? When he's being naughty, sometimes I'll say, you want to talk to Jesus, Wesley? And sometimes he'll say, no, he don't want to talk to Jesus. He don't want to talk to nobody. He just wants to get into mischief. But most of the time he says, yeah. And he holds his hand up and we pray. And that's all, you don't even have to do, you can just say, you don't have to do anything except whisper a prayer to Jesus. Jesus, help me just now so that I won't uh, have the desire that uh, will cause me to sin. You know, having that desire is not sin, but it's going through with it. So we love Jesus, don't we? Who loves Jesus here? Every hand ought to go up, guys, even though you're adults. I'm a lot older than most of you here. I think I'm about the oldest in the church now. I was the youngest when I first came here, but I'm not anymore. Lots of experiences. And now you're young, and you're starting your life out. And you love Jesus, keep loving him. That's all you have to do is keep loving him. And someday... We're going to see him. Won't that be fun? That day will be fun. We might not have some fun times between now and then. But just like when you're riding, you don't, you look where you're going. You don't look at the gutter. You're going to wind up in the gutter. Keep your eyes where you're going. If you're fixing on a curve, a hard time, you look beyond that curve. You keep your eye there focused. It'll save your life, your eternal life. You keep focused on Jesus, okay, all the time. Okay, you can go to your seats. Mm -hmm. Our scripture reading today is from Philippians 4, 7, 
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Bendito Dios, bendícenos, enviando tu Santo Espíritu, Señor, y que sea tu palabra la que nosotros escuchemos, y no palabras de nosotros mismos. En el amor de Jesús lo pedimos. Amén. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Buenos días. Feliz sábado. En esta mañana vamos a... Tener un pequeño estudio. This morning we'll have a small study. Y vamos a comenzar con una pequeña historia. We'll start with a, with a short story. Um, este niño dice así. Dice, subí al Ártico donde mi abuelo guardaba los canarios. This is a, a short story of a, of a young boy. Um, he went up the, to the attic where his grandfather kept the canaries he raised. Lo observé como con asombro mientras uh, colocaba un solo canario en la jaula que inmediatamente quedó completamente uh, cubierto para dejar al ave en total oscuridad. He says, I observed... Uh, him with amazement as he placed a single canary in the cage and immediately completely covered it, leaving the bird in total darkness. Enseguida mi abuelo se puso a hablar y a silbar. Al oír su silbido, el canario captó el tono, aprendió el tono, aprendió la melodía en la oscuridad y, y la recordó para siempre. My grandfather began to whistle. As he heard the whistling, the bird caught the tone, learned the melody in the dark, and remembered it forever. El Nuevo Testamento destaca la fe por encima de toda obra y otra cualidad. Jesucristo mismo se mantuvo señalándola como la única esperanza para los cojos los ciegos, los orgullosos y los quebrantados de corazón. Los apóstoles centraron el mensaje del Evangelio en, en torno a la fe. The New Testament highlights faith above any other quality. Jesus Christ himself continuously pointed it out as the only hope for the lame, the blind, the proud, and the brokenhearted. The apostles centered the message of the gospel around faith. Ejemplo, en Gálatas 3.11 dice, el justo vivirá por fe. Y también. En Hebreos 10.38. También. También nos, nos recalca que el justo vivirá por la fe. Some of these examples can be found in Galatians 3.11 and Hebrews 10.38 where it says the righteous will live by faith. In Galatas 2.20, dice, vivo por la fe en el Hijo de Dios. Galatians 2.20 says, I live by faith in the Son of God. In Segunda de Corintios 5.7, nos dice, vivamos por fe, no por vista. Second Corinthians 5.7, tells us we live by faith, not by sight. ¿Qué es la fe? What is faith? ¿Cómo se define? How is it defined? ¿Qué quisieron decir los escritores bíblicos cuando usaron expresiones como el justo vivirá por la fe? What did the Biblical writers mean when they used expressions like the righteous will live by faith or walk by faith. El término que en español se traduce como fe es en el lenguaje del Nuevo Testamento, 
una palabra fuerte, dinámica y vibrante. Los escritores bíblicos siempre aludían a ella en relación con aquel en quien uno podía depositar. Podría definirse la fe como el don de Dios que nos lleva a una reacción de confianza con nuestro Padre. Con nuestro Padre Celestial, semejante a la que tenemos con nuestros ami nuestro amigo cercano, la vida de la fe es de con confianza. Continúa hora tras hora, día tras día. The term that in Spanish is translated as faith is in the language of the New Testament a strong word, dynamic and vibrant. Biblical writings always allude to the faith in relation to one in whom one could place it. Faith could be defined as the gift of God that leads us to a relationship of trust with our Heavenly Father, similar to the trust we have with our close friends. The life of faith is one of continuous trust, hour after hour and day after day. Dios nos enseña a confiar en Él del mismo modo en que se lo enseñó a Jesús durante su trayectoria en esta tierra. Tal vez la lección más difícil e importante de la vida sea aprender a confiar cuando no podemos entender lo que sucede. God teaches us to trust him in the same way that he taught Jesus during his journey on earth. Perhaps the most difficult and important lesson of life is to learn to trust when we cannot understand what is happening. En su mensaje a los filipenses, el apóstol Pablo se refiere a la paz que sobrepasa todo entendimiento. Cuando las perplejidades y las pruebas de la vida nos confunden nuestra fe, aún puede aferrarse a las promesas de Dios. No siempre podemos entender todo lo que nos sucede. In his message to the Philippines, the Apostle Paul refers to peace that surpasses all understanding. When the life's perplexities and trials confuse us, our faith can cling onto God's promises. We will not always be able to understand everything that happens to us. La vida, la vida tiene sus altas y bajas, sus gozos y sus tristezas, sus triunfos y derrotas. Tratar de entender por qué Dios permite la angustia y el sufrimiento puede solo dejarnos aún más confusos. Una cosa es segura, aunque no podamos siempre entender la vida cristiana, podemos siempre confiar en Dios. Life has its ups and downs, its joys and sadness, its triumphs and defeats. <coughs> Trying to understand why God allows anguish and suffering can only leave us more, <coughs> more confused. Excuse me. One thing is certain, although we may not always be able to understand the Christian life, we can always trust in God. La confianza conlleva la profunda convicción de que Dios obra en nuestras vidas. Ahora vemos oscuramente, nos dice Primera de Corintios 13:12. Parecen, pero, pero en la oscuridad. Como el canario, aprendemos a cantar, aprendemos a captar el silbo de Dios. Trust involves the profound conviction that God works in our lives. Now we see in the dark, as we read in Corinthians 13, 12, but in the darkness, like the canary, we learn to sing. We learn to grasp the whistle of God. Aprendemos el canto de la confianza. Piensa en Jesús, solo en la oscuridad, pendiendo de una cruz entre el cielo y la tierra. En el peor momento de su vida, clamó, Padre, en tus manos encomiendo mi espíritu. Lucas 23, 46. Ridicu ridiculizado por la turba, Traicionado por Judas, negado por Pedro, 
abandonado por sus discípulos, rechazado por los judíos y crucificado por los romanos. Jesús vivió confiando y nos enseña a confiar como Él, el fruto en la semilla. Cada experiencia contiene su lección de confianza. We learn the song of trust. Think of Jesus in the darkness, hanging on a cross between heaven and earth. During the worst moment of his life, cried out to God, Father, in your hands I commit my spirit. Luke 23, 46. Ridiculed by the crowd, betrayed by Judas, denied by Peter, abandoned by his disciples, and rejected by the Jews, crucified by the Romans, Jesus lived confident and teaches us to trust. Like the fruit of, to the seed, every experience has a lesson on trust. Muchos de nosotros tenemos experiencias. Many of us have many experiences. Y esto nos trae a, a lecciones de confianza. These bring us to lessons of trust. Y ahora tenemos uh, un testimonio que por el hermano. Olage. We'll hear a testimony by, by Mr. Brother Olage. Buenos días. Todos contentos. Good morning. Everyone happy? En esta mañana estoy aquí para dar un pequeño testimonio in this, de mi vida. In this moment I'm going to share a small testimony of my life. Uh, como dice, hoy no creo exactamente, pero si alguien lo sabe, hay una escritura en el libro de Juan que dice que Jesucristo si él hubiera escrito todo lo que él hizo en su vida, no hubieran uh, ¿Cómo dice? ¿Cabido? No, ¿Cabido en, en, en todos los libros del mundo? Um, John tells us, in the book of John, it tells us that Jesus once said that if um, he was able to write his story, uh, his story would not fit in, any, in all the books of the world. Así es que todos aquellos que tenemos una relación con Cristo, all of us who have a relationship with Christ, siempre tendremos algo que contar. We'll always have something to to say. Especialmente de nuestra vida y Especially Cristo. Especially of our lives and Christ. Uh, una edad muy temprana, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, yo este me salí de mi casa. Era I, era muy muy a I mí mean, una edad de tiro que ni yo ni yo mismo puedo comprender ahora. I left home when I was very young. Um, I can't even comprehend it now. Y me acuerdo, me tocó uh, visitar mucho, muchas iglesias, especialmente eh, creo que todas eran bautistas. I had the opportunity to visit many churches, most of them Baptist. Pasó mucho tiempo de esto y un día. Many years later, one day. Uh, y esto fue aquí en este pueblo. This happened here in Roswell. Me empecé a tener una sensación y al mismo tiempo eh, tuve muchas visitas de personas cristianas. Um, I, ha, I, start, I began to have many visits uh, from various Christians. Especialmente, ustedes saben, algunas personas que visitan en muchos los hogares. Um, you know, there are very many, many persons who visit uh, people's homes. Y por final, vamos a hacer nuestro corto, ¿verdad? Y rápido, porque no hay mucho tiempo. Pero este, un día me encontré con unas personas y empezamos a hablar de Jesucristo, ¿verdad? Y como dos o tres veces, ¿verdad? Como trabajábamos juntos, estuvimos hablando sobre eso. One day, um, as some persons visited me, Uh, we began talking about Jesus. Y después no nos volvimos a mirar, ¿verdad? Me ofrecieron ir a mi hogar, pero no se llegó el tiempo. Later, um, time passed and, and they no longer visited. 
Ok, este, después tuve que salir de aquí, fui a trabajar a otros lugares. Um, I left Roswell and, and went to work in other places. Y en ese lugar, este, me encontré con otras personas, este, también que eran cristianos. And again, I, I came across some other Christians. La mayoría de ellos eran pastores, evangelistas y de toda clase de pastores. The majority of them uh, pastors evangelistic pastors. Y teníamos un lugar donde siempre se reunían personas cristianas. We had a place where uh, Christian people gathered. A algunos de ellos, de los pastores, me invitaron a, a reunirme con ellos y ellos me conseguían una iglesia para correr esa iglesia y, y poder este, no solamente conocer más de Cristo, pero tampoco nunca se llevó a cabo. No creí yo que era un tiempo para mí de hacer eso. I was invited to, um, to head up a church, um, but at that time, I didn't think it was the moment for that. Uh, una vez uh, tenía un amigo que también se reunía, él no, no, no parecía tener ninguna, ¿cómo se puede decir? I mean, deseo de reunirse a la iglesia ni cosas así. I had a friend who didn't, didn't seem to have the desire to, um, to join a church or anything like that. Y un día platicando, él me dijo que sus familias eran cristianas. And one day, um, as we talked, he, he mentioned that his family were, was Christian. Él estaba hablando de su esposa y sus hijos. He was talking about his wife and his children. Y le pregunté yo, este, ¿a qué iglesia van ellos? And he asked, what, um, and I asked, what church do they go to? Él, él me dijo, este, ellos son de la iglesia del séptimo día. They are um, from, from the church of the seventh day. Y aquella cosa se me hizo media curiosa, ¿verdad? Pero nunca le pregunté nada. Pero para mí, ¿verdad? yo dije, bueno, ¿qué será esta? Eso es cosa del diablo, ¿ok? Um, and he thought, he didn't tell him anything, but he thought um, it, it was kind of strange. Um, could it be satanic or, or what? Y este... Ya era tiempo casi de salir, era un contrato que hacía cada año yo por seis meses. Uh, I was working um, uh, by contract uh, every six months, and it was almost time to leave. Solo que ya no platicamos más de eso. I didn't get a chance to talk to him anymore. Okay, pero con el tiempo, ¿verdad? con el tiempo, uh, juntando cosas de las que yo había oído en, en el transcurso de tiempo, ¿verdad? pues de, de un año. Um, but... As I gathered information in that course of that year, y volví aquí a Roswell otra vez, and when I returned here to Roswell again, me di cuenta que, por ejemplo, la iglesia del séptimo día y las personas con las que había hablado aquí eran las mismas personas. Um, I realized that the, the Seventh Day Church um, and the people that I had spoken to were the same. Solo que para mí, ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, yo sabía que Dios estaba trabajando en mi vida. So I realized that God was working in my life. Y este, las cosas aquí volvieron, cuando volví aquí otra vez, el mismo espíritu me estaba persiguiendo donde quiera. The same as when I returned here to Roswell, the same spirit was, was following me. Solo que... Hay cosas en nuestra vida, ¿verdad? Todos, uh, Dios nos sigue en diferente manera, nos busca. God looks for us um, in different, man different ways. Unos uh, aceptamos, otros corremos, nos retiramos de esas cosas. Some of us accept, some of us run. Pero para mí fue lo, lo mejor que hubiera sucedido en mi vida. But for me, it was the best thing that happened to me, that could have happened to me in my life. Hay muchas cosas que contar, pero realmente, como les digo, ¿verdad? Pero este, yo le doy gracias a Dios por estos momentos. There, there would be many things that I could, um, that I could share, but right now I'm giving, uh, I'm thankful to God. Yo le, les pido a cada uno de ustedes, ¿verdad? Que nos enseñemos a conocer la voz de Dios. And I would ask each and every one of us to learn to, um, to recognize the voice of God. Hay muchas voces llamándonos. There are many voices calling us. 
pero la voz de Dios es diferente y eso es lo que tenemos nosotros que aprender but cuál es la voz de Dios but the voice of, of God is different and that's where we have to that is what we have to recognize así es que ahí vamos a parar esta mañana pero este les aseguro que les en mi tiempo de vida que me queda hay muchas cosas que contarles right. I'll end my talk here but I can assure you that in 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 the time that I have left Um, there are many things that I can, can share. God bless you this morning. Next we will hear from Sally in, with a testimony of her. Are you going to translate me into Spanish? I got it. No. Oh gosh. Okay. I'll try to translate to Spanish. <laughs> Your mind's going like this. <laughs> well, what a beautiful testimony. Um, Elder Olagi, beautiful testimony. Qué hermoso testimonio del hermano Olagi. Uh, the Spirit of God is wooing every one of us. El Espíritu de Dios nos está moviendo a cada uno de nosotros. Uh, I saw something very precious this morning. Vi algo muy hermoso esta mañana. I saw a dedicated Sabbath school teacher teaching her children. Vi una maestra de escuela sabática dedicada a uh, enseñando a sus, sus alumnos. You never know what your precious love and words are doing in your young people's lives, because I'm going to give a testimony of when I was a little girl. Uno nunca sabe, can you repeat that? I'm so sorry. You'll never know how important your words are to the children. Uno nunca um, sabe qué importante sus palabras son cuando uno es maestra de la escuela sabática. Be, because my testimony is about when I was a little girl. Mi testimonio es uh, de cuando yo era una niña. My mother took me to Sabbath school. Mi mamá me llevó a la escuela sabática. And I had lots of Sabbath school teachers. Y tenía muchas uh, maestras de escuela sabática. And I don't remember their names necessarily. No me recuerdo su nombre. But I must have learned what they were teaching me. Pero sí aprendí lo que me estaban enseñando. Because when I was about eight to ten years old, are there anybody? Is there anybody in here eight to ten years old? Cuando yo tenía como dentro de ocho a diez años, hay algunos niños que de dentro de ocho a diez años. I think I saw Nathaniel raise his hand in the back. <laughs> Anyhow, that's how old I was. They were telling scary stories. Estaban contando um, historias um, uh, horror de, de terror. <laughs> Not in Sabbath school. <laughs> no, en, no en, la, en, en la escuela sabática. But my friends were. Pero mis amigas estaban contando. And they had some story about a lady with a golden leg. Y tenían una historia, estaban contando de una historia de una mujer con una, una pierna de oro. My husband says it was a golden arm. <laughs> Mi esposo dice que era una, un brazo de oro. But they, they killed the person and stole the golden leg. Pero mataron a esta persona y le robaron el oro. And put the golden leg under the bed. Pusieron el, el, la pierna de oro abajo de la, de la cama. But this golden leg would come out at night and kill the person. Y la la pierna de oro salía en la noche y mataba a la persona. So one night I was sleeping in my bed and I was so scared. Una noche estaba dormida yo en mi cama y tenía mucho miedo. I thought maybe the golden legs under my bed. Tal vez la pierna de oro está bajo de mi cama. I was really scared. Tenía mucho miedo. But then I remembered. Pero entonces recordé. I have a guardian angel. Yo tengo un ángel guardián. And I trust my guardian angels protecting me. Y yo confío que mi ángel guardián me está protegiendo. So as scared as I was, aunque tenía mucho miedo, I reached my hand outside the bed to hold my guardian angel's hand. Saqué mi mano y um, para poder Cogerme de la mano de mi ángel. I don't feel if my guardian angel held back. No, no sé si mi, no siento que mi ángel guardián se, um, held my hand. Uh, me, me tomó mi mano. 
But I think so. Pero yo creo que sí. I fell peacefully to sleep. Me quedé dormida muy pacíficamente. And it was confirmed in my heart that I have a God in heaven and a guardian angel that love me. Confirmé esa noche en mi corazón que tengo un ángel que me cuida y que tengo un Dios que me ama. Amen. I need to remember that act of faith and keep doing that in my ne life. Necesito recordarme esa fe activa y uh, mantenerla viva en, en mi vida. Amen. And you too. Y usted también. Amen. Muchas gracias a los hermanos que han compartido estas experiencias. Thank you to, to the brothers and sisters who have uh, shared their experiences. Y ahora yo quiero compartir una experiencia. I want to share an experience con una de mis niñas that occurred with one of my daughters cuando era bien pequeña. When she was very little. Siempre le gustaba subirse en alto. Um, she always liked to climb um, in high things. Pueden ver que por más que la cuidábamos, ella se las ingeniaba para subirse en lo alto. It didn't matter how much we, we, we were after her, she would climb where, whatever she could. En una ocasión se subió en un hogal altísimo. On one occasion she climbed a very tall pecan tree. Cuando la vimos, mi esposo dijo, no le griten para que no se asuste. When we saw her, my husband said for us not to yell at her so she wouldn't get scared. Él le dijo, no tenga miedo. He told her, don't be afraid. Suéltese. Let go, and I'll y yo catch la agarro. Fue un momento de suspenso it para was, todos. It was a suspenseful moment for us all. Pero la niña creyó y se soltó. But she believed and she let go. Los niños creen. Children believe. Eso es fe. That is faith. No en vano Jesús dijo que si no fuésemos como niños, no entraríamos en el reino. Not in vain, Jesus said, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That's found in Matthew 18.3. Pensemos por un momento. Let's think for a moment. ¿Qué me detiene? What holds me back? ¿Qué tenemos que soltar para quedar libres y poder confiar en Jesús? What do we need to let go of to be free and be able to trust in Jesus? Sean cuales fueren nuestras circunstancias, pidámosle a Dios que aún de nuestra confianza en Él, que aumente nuestra fe, que nos ayude a asirnos de su, de su amor, aún que no podamos entender lo que nos pasa. O por qué nos pasa, roguémosle como el Padre aquel que se acercó a Jesús para pedirle por la sanidad de su Hijo. Whatever our circumstances, let's ask God to deepen our trust in Him and increase our faith. May He help us hold fast to His love when we cannot understand what we are going through, through or why. Let's ask Him, like the father that approached Jesus, to ask Him for the healing of His Son. The story can be found in Mark 9, 21 to 24. Lo podemos leer en sus Biblias, lo pueden buscar en Marcos. 9 del 21 al 24. Aquí, ya. Aquí, no más esto. 
Y allí la última parte de, de esta lectura nos dice... Nos dice, cuando Jesús le preguntó y le dijo, todo el que cree, recibirá. Jesus said, everything is possible for, for one who believes. E inmediatamente, el padre del muchacho clamó y dijo, creo, ayuda mi incredulidad. The boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Mi petición es. Mi petición es ayuda mi incredulidad. Ayúdame a confiar en ti plenamente. My prayer today is help my unbelief. Help me trust in you fully. ¿Cuántos quisieran también decirle estas mismas palabras a Jesús? Who would like to also say these same words to Jesus? Help me trust in you fully. Quisiéramos decirle eso a Jesús. Si quisiéramos decirle eso a Jesús, pongámonos de pie. If you want to say these words to Jesus, let's stand. Help our, our disbelief. Ayuda a soltar aquello Help us release those que nos detiene. That, uh, hold us back. Y nos está apartando de estar cerca de ti. Those things that are keeping us from you. Y prepararnos. Help us prepare us para la vida eterna. For the eternal life. Ayúdanos, Señor. Help us, Lord. En el nombre de tu amado Hijo, te lo suplicamos. In Jesus' name. Amén. Amen. Amen.